uh, from Barilan University. A guy received his PhD studies in Barilan University. His dissertation dealt with the Jewish journal El Alam El Israeli, or the Jewish word, that was published in Beirut in the period of 1921 to 1948. After receiving his PhD, he conducted a research about the Jews in Lebanon in the Ben Svi Institute as a Tony and Oded El Yashar a research fellow. Since 2013, he is a lecturer in Bar Ilan University. His research fields are the Jewish press in the Middle East, Haskalah or Enlightenment in the Middle East, and social political history of the Jews in Syria and Lebanon. Among his publications, uh, I can mention the forthcoming uh, Les Juifs en Syrie du Liban pendant la Seconde Guerre mondiale, that is going to be published in La Revue d'Histoire de la Shoah, or the Jews of Syria and Lebanon during the Second World War. Um, the title of a uh, guy's presentation today is How to Translate Ghetto into Arabic, the coverage of the Holocaust in a Lebanese Jewish newspaper. Guys, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, how do you translate ghetto to Arabic? How do you translate ghetto to Arabic? Uh, this was one of the problems that the editors of a Jewish journal had to face in Beirut, Lebanon, 1939. The journal was El Alam El Israeli, the Jewish world, that you can see over here. Uh, it was published in Beirut in literary Arabic since 1921. And uh, uh, its editors were Salim Mann, who was also uh, the publisher, is from Beirut, and Moiz Ajmi from Damascus. The, this journal had two agendas. The first one was cultural and even identical assimilation in the Syrian Lebanese sphere. Uh, and this is the reason why the uh, journal is written in literary Arabic and not in French, that was the more common uh, language uh, of the Jews in Syria and Lebanon, the uh, cultural language of the Jews. The writers of El Alam al Israeli felt themselves part of the local Arab culture and part of the Lebanese Syrian homeland, Watan in Arabic. The other agenda was Zionism, or to be more precisely, Jewish nationalism, Qawmiya Israelia in Arabic, and hence the name of the journal, the Jewish world. We are part of the Jewish world. Uh, and the coverage of the Jews under the Nazi regime is part of this agenda. But the coverage was through the editor's Syrian and Lebanese outlook, through their Syrian Lebanese eyes. And this is the uh, subject of the lecture. Uh, two comments about the uh, technical aspect of the coverage. The first is that most of the information about the Jews under the Nazi regime was from other newspapers, Jewish and non-Jewish, in Hebrew, Arabic, French, and English. The second is that the journal was bi-weekly. It, uh, it was published every two weeks, and during the war, the authorities 
order to limit the number of the pages of all of the, the newspapers in Syria and Lebanon. So, uh, summarize, the editors could dedicate only two pages to the subject of the Jews under the Nazi regime. And to, do, to those two pages, they had to cram all the information that they got during the past two weeks. It means that they couldn't publish every report they got. They had to choose those who seemed to them, to their point of view, more important or more uh, suitable to their agenda. And now, now I'm going to the coverage. Since the beginning of the war, to July 1941, or even July 1940, I'll correct, El Alam al Israeli had focused on Eastern Europe and especially on Poland. The coverage was on two subjects. The first was the persecution of the, Jew, of the Jews, and it included descriptions, many descriptions of hum humiliation of the uh, Jews, uh, expropriation, their uh, property, and killings from random and and sporadic uh, killings of individuals to mass murder of hundreds and thousands. The editor saw all of those actions of the Germans as permanent increase of anti-Jewish activity that started in 1933 when, the, when Hitler uh, raised to power. It doesn't mean they... Uh, excuse me. It doesn't mean that they uh, underestimated it. They use, we can see that they used the large and dramatic titles uh, for the, the report. They used the term Madabih from the beginning of the war, the, the Madabih, massacres, and since 1941, Maasa or Maasa Damia, a tra tragedy or a great disaster. Uh, the Nazi occupied territories were called El Jahim, the inferno, uh, the hellish uh, territories. And uh, <coughs> when we are ex uh, examining the coverage in this stage, we can see that the editors emphasized two things. The first was that Hitler wasn't only against, against the Jews but against all of the religious. Okay, not clear. According to the editors, the Nazi persecuted priests, Christian priests, as much as they, they persecuted Jews. Every report about uh, harming the Christians and Muslims by the Nazis were published prominently. Uh, for example, the editor, the editor summarized an article from the Hebrew newspaper Davar dealing with the Nazi occupation of Russia. In the Hebrew newspaper, it was mentioned in Teralia that the Nazi had killed uh, Tatar children. El Alam al Israeli published prominently that the Nazi killed Muslim children. Uh, in other description of uh, Ghetto Varsha, it was written that among the Jews, there were also 1,500 Catholic, 150 Protestant, and 73 from other religious. And this report uh, is due to the Lebanese uh, confessional uh, distribution, Mafteacha uh, Adati. The, the Lebanese uh, system of the confessional distribution and it uh, suits to the reality of Lebanon and also of uh, Syria of many religious communities. It can be assumed that it was directed to the non-Jews and came as a contra to the Nazi propaganda in Syria and Lebanon. The other thing they emphasized was that the Jews were patriots. Polish Jews were uh, Polish patriots, Austrian Jews were Austrian patriots, 
Wataniyun uh, in Arabic. And part of the reason that they were persecuted was because of their patriotic resistance to the Germans. In the title of one of the articles, it was written that Hitler want to kill 500 Jews because they, depended, they defended their homeland. And those articles came to raise national solidarity among the Syrian and Lebanese nationalists with the persecuted Jews. Uh, executions of patriots by, the, by tyrant raised the national memory of the executions of the Syrian and Lebanese nationalists in First World War by the Ottoman governor Jamal Pasha. But alongside uh, the, this uh, propaganda uh, matter, it might indicate an authentic uh, perspective of the editors about what was happening in Europe. So the first issue was the uh, persecutions of the Jews, and the second one was ghettoization. Um, and it started uh, first with the Lublin plan, the plan to concentrate all of the Jews, all of the Jews in the Reich in Lublin. And uh, afterward, the, journal, the journal started uh, reporting about the ghettos. For European origin uh, Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, the term ghetto was well known, and it was uh, widely in use before of the war, especially concerning to us students, not only. The Hebrew newspapers didn't translate it. They used the word ghetto in Hebrew letters. But for Salim Mann and Moiz Ajmi, this was a new term. The idea to separate the Jews, to concentrate them, was, was new. And then they tried to figure out what was the purpose of it? So maybe the weather in Lublin is too rough, too cold, and the Austrian Jews couldn't uh, survive over there. Maybe there are no, there are no uh, employment opportunities in the ghettos, and the Jews over there will live in poverty. And maybe, and maybe, and at last they, they wrote, there is no use to look for a reason. The Nazi put the Jews in ghettos because they are barbarians. And they do so from barbaric uh, reason. And uh, misunderstanding, the misunderstanding of the term ghetto was seen in the attempts to translate it. It was called separate neighborhood, Chai Chasa, and Mukata'a uh, Yahudia. Um, uh, Jewish area and um, many attempts but the translation that was uh, accepted was Muatakal, a detention camp but this term used also for uh, concentration camps in the newspaper only in July 1943 the word ghetto was written in Arabic in Arabic letters Rito in Arabic, and ne next to the word Muatakal. That showed that the editors started to look at the word ghetto as a special term which belonged to the Nazi uh, termin terminology. And since then, we can find those two terms in Al Alam Israeli, Muatakal and Ghetto. On June 1940, Syria and Lebanon are getting under Vichy regime for about a year and from July 1941 El Alam al-Israeli returned covering in intensively the situation of the Jews in Europe. But we can see that the focus is now on France, France and its colony in North Africa. And the place of Poland in the in the journal was reduced significantly. Unlike Poland, which was which the writers and the readers 
knew nothing about until the war, France was well-known territory. Most of the Jews were graduates of French uh, educational institutes. First, uh, first and most, Alliance Israelit Universal and um, uh, French missions, and they knew a lot about its uh, geography, history, and culture. But more than that, uh, France was not only a country for the Jews in Syria and Lebanon, it was an, uh, um, ideal, uh, ideal, yes, ideal, a sort of mental homeland. It was the capital of enlightenment, the capital of the tolerance toward the Jews. And they identified with, with all their heart with the French slogan, Liberté, Egalité, Fraternité. And not only the Jews. The fact that in France, the bride of Europe, there were race laws and persecutions was a great shock, a crisis. And also not for not only for the Jews. Um, the coverage of France was not only by uh, reports like in Poland, but also in editorial articles and uh, large essays. And um, it lasts until the occupation or until it released by the Allies in 1944. Um, This is the map of France in El Alam al Israeli. Um, uh, the writers had, met, had made a great effort to distinguish between France and Vichy regime and to show that France remained the, the same. So they highlight. Uh, protests in France against the regime and rescuing of uh, Jews by the population and they less focus about the situation of the French Jews uh, and especially not those who were transformed to Poland. Uh, now I'm going to the last subject, the extermination. The writers of and the editors of El Alam al Israeli started to talk about extermination, Istisal Shafa, only after the official announcement of the British Foreign Minister Anthony Eden at the end of 1942. And we can see that the extermination was covered much less than the ghettoization at the beginning of the war. The reports of this is the announce in El uh, Alam al-Israeli about the extermination. See the dramatic uh, title Shema uh, Israel but, uh, but uh, this article is from the beginning of 1943, Janu January 1943, after the rabbis in, in uh, Syria and Lebanon held special prayers for the Holocaust victim. And although from uh, 1943 the editors could find uh, a lot of information in the Jewish press about the extermination system in, in Poland, the focus remained on France. One of the reasons is that despite of the horror of this of the news, it was an exception from the anti Semite line of the German since nineteen thirty three. Uh, but I think more important that the readers of the newspaper could get the information directly from the survivor uh, which had arrived to Beirut in this period 
uh, in their way to Eretz Israel Palestine. And I'm, I'm, I want to remind that the uh, journal is B weekly. He cannot um, he cannot uh, cover uh, uh, daily the all the um, the news. So the role. Uh, so the role of the of El Alam Israeli as the editor saw it was not to inform to report about the extermination, but to encourage the uh, the uh, Syrian and Lebanese Jews. And that the editors did with optimist, optimistic reports on the war and, and the close defeat of Hitler. And this is the defeat of Hitler. In conclusion, I wanted to show how the editors and the writers of El Alam al Israeli translated the great tragedy of the Jewish people uh, through their Syrian uh, co uh, Lebanese core per uh, perceptions. And through the journal, they had created a unique Jewish Syrian Lebanese version of the story of the Holocaust. Uh, thank you very much.